even with all the insane amounts of renewable energy being installed in America, in the United States, there's, there's literally enormous solar farms that go on for miles being installed all over the place. I mean, there's enormous amounts of wind generation and batteries being installed, but all of this is great. It doesn't unfortunately solve the problem, which is grid. The US grid is in a shambles, but apparently, according to researchers, one relatively simple thing could double the US grid's capacity, which would mean, yes, everyone in America could in fact have an electric car. However, is it really feasible? Well, here's the story. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Now, guys, I saw this story a couple of weeks ago, and I've been sent this story by so many of you that I realized just how important this information really, really is. In America, the media, uh, I believe some parts, some politicians and some parts of the media, they're basically saying, you know what, if we were to go EV only, it's going to destroy the grid here. It's The grid is going to be just completely annihilated. So this can't work. Well, there's one big thing holding up the United States from a pollution-free electricity grid running on wind, solar, and battery power, and that is not enough power lines. As developers rush to install wind farms and enormous solar plants to power data centers, artificial intelligence systems, and electric cars, the nation's sagging out-of-date power lines are being, in some areas, overwhelmed, slowing the transition to clean energy and the fight against climate change. The Washington Post reports that the experts are saying there is a remarkably simple fix. Installing new wires on the high voltage lines that already carry power hundreds of miles across the United States. It's actually relatively uh, affordable too. Just upgrading those wires, new reports show, could double the amount of power that can flow through America's electricity grid. This is something that could be a triple win, said Brian Deese, an innovation fellow at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, who headed the White House National Economic Council under President Biden until early last year. A win for the electricity system, a win for utilities, a win for consumers. Since Biden signed the Inflation Reduction Act in August of 2022, pouring hundreds of billions of dollars toward the build out of clean energy, experts have warned that without a dramatic increase in the size of the electricity grid, most of those new wind and solar farms won't be able to actually be properly used. This is true. Now, a lot of this enormous increase in energy use is coming from data centers. Data centers are using insane amounts of power. And a lot of them are actually commissioning new, new solar farms to be built in order to run their, their data centers. However, really, there still is some issues, of course, with the grid actually you know, sending that energy to where it's needed. Many renewables are stuck in the interconnection queue, a long line of projects waiting to get connected to the grid. According to Lawrence Berkeley Laboratory or National Laboratory, more than 1,500 gigawatts of power, mostly renewables, are waiting for approval to actually connect. That's more than one third of all the power in the United States. So that's about 35% of all America's power, right? In essence, that 35% is going to come and revolutionize America's grid. It's going to make it so much greener, 35%. And we're talking at 34% of that 35% are renewables. It's all waiting. It's all sitting there, basically just gathering dust. It's kind of insane. One of the main reasons for that long wait is that the nation builds transmission lines, those giant high voltage wires that carry power across long distances, incredibly slowly. The average transmission line takes 10 years to complete, and the country has been building even fewer lines recently than it did a decade ago. It's bizarre. I don't think anyone understands why exactly that's happening. Without enough power lines, there is nowhere for new solar, wind, and battery power to actually go. We have to be able to integrate all this low-cost renewable energy fast, said Amol Fadke, a scientist at the University of California at Berkeley and Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory. That's when replacing the country's power lines or reconductoring, as engineers call it, comes in. 
Most of America's lines are wired with a technology that has been around since the early 1900s. Remember, in the early 1900s, 70% of America did not have electricity, 70%. Now this technology is a core steel wire, which is surrounded by strands of aluminum. When those old wires heat up, whether from power passing through them or warm outdoor temperatures, they sag. Too much sag in a transmission line is dangerous. It can cause fires or outages. As a result, grid operators have to be careful not to allow too much power through the power lines um, to prevent potentially a, a disaster. A couple of decades ago, engineers designed a new type of wire a core made of carbon fiber surrounded by trapezoidal pieces of aluminium. These new carbon fiber wires don't sag much at all, even in the heat. And that means that they can take up to double the amount of power versus the old power lines. In other words, just replace the old one with a new one and you can send twice as much power through the grid. It sounds incredibly simple. According to the recent study from researchers at UC Berkeley and Grid Lab, Replacing those older steel wires could provide up to 80% of the new transmission needed on the electricity grid without building anything new at all. It could also cost half as much as building an entirely new line and avoid the headaches of trying to get every state, city, and even landowner along the route to agree to a new project. Now, what's holding this up? Is it politics? Is it something else? You're not acquiring a new right of way. You're not building new towers, said Fadke. It can be done much faster this way. If stringing new lines together is so easy and so cheap, why hasn't it been done already? Part of the problem, experts say, is that utilities are profiting more from big infrastructure projects. So yes, politics is playing a huge role and it's to the enormous detriment of all Americans. Routine maintenance or larger scale upgrades of the electricity grid don't help utilities make a lot of cash compared with building new transmission lines. Dees compares it to having leaky pipes in a building. Building managers don't get rewarded for fixing all of the building's problems, but rather for just keeping things running as long as possible on a limited budget. You patch and plug rather than thinking systematically, said Dees. Duncan Calloway, professor of energy and resources at UC Berkeley and one of the authors of this recent study, said that many transmission engineers are not used to thinking of rewiring as one of their tools. But it's a much faster way, he said. Now, there's so many intelligent people in the United States. There is. I mean, yeah, sure, in every country there's a lot of morons as well, but there's a lot of very intelligent people in America. And the fact that this is not happening to me is just shocking. Some changes are already underway, though, to encourage this approach. For a long time, utilities had to undergo lengthy environmental reviews if they were rewiring a line longer than 20 miles, which holds projects up for years. Earlier this month, the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission announced that those would no longer be necessary if utilities are simply replacing wires. So the federal government is not holding this up. It's not permits holding this, preventing this from happening. Last month, the Biden administration announced a goal to upgrade 100,000 miles of transmission lines over the next five years, which could include rewiring the lines. We actually need stuff that can cook right now, right away, said Ali Zaidi, the White House National Climate Advisor, on Tuesday at a White House summit on grid modernization. And the way to do that is by deploying grid enhancing technologies by reconductoring the lines that we have already strung up or buried across the country. Now, of course, the lines that have been buried, they're a fair bit more work for them to be replaced, but the lines that have been strung up, very, very easy, very quick, very efficient, and very, very affordable in comparison to the alternatives. This doesn't mean that new lines don't need to be built in some places. In the longer run, newer lines will play an important role, said Fadke. But as new demand surges onto the grid in the short term, upgrading the nation's wires could help keep clean energy flowing until those new lines can be built. We have the potential to achieve all of these things with just taking new technology and running it through old lines, said Dees. It's pretty cool. 
Now, to me, this sounds like an absolute no-brainer. If the benefits of rewiring can be publicized and pushed enough to force utilities to actually act on this, some major projects to upgrade the grid still need to happen, of course, but those are longer-term issues that involve acquiring land and permits and, of course, big funding. Rewiring plus battery storage is a much faster and cheaper method to get more capacity into the grid versus what currently exists. And this allows more lower cost renewable energy to get on board almost immediately. I mean, we're looking at, you know, 35% of America's current power could be added and it'd be renewables. Potentially the Amer America's grid could be more than 50% renewables within the space of months if all this energy, which is just sitting idle, were to be actually turned on. Otherwise, why would we keep generating an excess of energy, you know, all, this, all these renewables, if the power has nowhere to go on these aging grid lines and it'll never actually be approved? Now, obviously, the White House knows this information. The federal government, they're trying to do something about it. But now this stuff, this, this relies on the state. The states need to actually recognize what needs to be done and get to it because the potential here is enormous. The potential to revolutionize America's grid is literally so close and yet, so far. Thanks for watching.